hello everyone. Thank you all for coming. You're watching there, Maria, for organizing the event. So today I'm going to talk about uh, what I call a formal anomaly, uh, which is often formulated as an objection called Newman's objection. And uh, I consider it to be an anomaly because it points out, it indicates that our concept of scientific structure has a lot of problems. We've been conceptualized it wrong, in my opinion. And that perhaps I think a good response to this, to this concern, to this objection may lead us toward a better, a better understanding of the relation between mathematics and science in general. So here I'm gonna uh, go over the problem, the general idea behind Newman's objection and how it affects uh, structuralism. And in particular, uh, how it affects uh, the most traditional way we've been conceptualizing the notion of structure just through the Ramsey census approach. And uh, <clears throat> lastly, I want to talk about some key elements I find uh, important for more Ramsey notion of scientific structure. So let's go to the, the, this is the plan of the talk. Let's go make a brief recap of what is this structure is I'm talking about. So uh, by structuralism, I mean the view that gives some form of priority to the structures rather than the, the objects that make part of the structure constituted. And this uh, priority is usually cast in terms of an epistemological axis or ontological precedence. So if we take this notion and apply it to science, we get this very general idea of scientific structuralism, the, which is the idea that uh, in our best theories, representations, models, they are capable of capturing to a certain extent, uh, how reality or our empirical data thereof is structured. And uh, I just cast in this rather loose way just to comprehend the, uh, the various forms in which structuralism appears today. So, for example, we have uh, epistemic structural realism, the idea that on top of that, we have only knowledge of structure, and we can have various degrees to that. Uh, normally, we can talk, uh, we can commit to this claim regarding unobservables. But if you want to be uh, more ontologically committed, we can opt for ontic structural real realism, which takes uh, structures to be ontologically primitive. And if we, we reject this idea, we can engage with structural empiricism. The idea that uh, our structures go only, go only as far as to give us empirically adequate theories, representations, and models. So, uh, why structuralism? Why is it important and why do we care about a challenge to it? Well, I think that structuralism is particularly suitable to address three key elements that I think uh, that are key to any uh, adequate uh, framework to analyze in science. The first is uh, it can account for theory change, so it can have uh, change in the, base, in the basic ontology of theories and remain and preserve the structure. Won't go into that for now. The other point is that it can address peculiarities of key scientific contexts like the, the quantum individuality phenomena and the prediction of particles through symmetry groups. Structuralism is, it's, I think it's adequate to these contexts. And more generally, and intertwined with the last points, is that I think that it captures a crucial and correct uh, captures a crucial point in scientific analysis. That is, uh, it is notably attuned or sensible of the relation, the close ties between mathematics and the sciences. In particular, the abstract structures we employ in modeling, representing at all, and the the base ontology we use, the objects to which we refer in these models. So, okay, now we have. The structure is part done. Let's go to the objection. Max Newman was the first one who, for, who formulated this objection. Uh, and it was formulated against his colleague, his colleague's views, structuralist views at the time. The colleague being Russell, in particular, in his book Analysis of Matter, where he defended the idea that uh, we only have knowledge of structure. Um, so, uh, 
Russell claims that that we only have th this this epistemic st uh, this epistemic structural view that we only have knowledge of structure, and that this knowledge is expressible through purely formal terms, through mathematical logic. And against this view, Newman formulated his objection, which says that but any collection of things I'm, I'm quoting can be organized so as to have the structure that we're interested in, provided there are the right number of them. So if we assume Russell's views at the time, we get the doctrine that nothing can be known that is not logically deducible from the mere fact of existence, except theoretically the number of constituting objects, that is cardinality. And notice that uh, the objection is, is formulated in very general terms, so it's not framework specific. And I brought one example from Von Frassen to illustrate this. So uh, suppose here we have seven neighbors, this group of people there. And I say they instantiate a model a structure. I have a rigidly hierarchical social structure. In this model, we have seven elements and I directly under relation up there, uh, which can be represented by the following military hierarchy. So we have here a general with two colonels under him or her. And under each colonel, we have two majors. And why do I say the neighbors instantiate this hierarchical structure? Because I define a relation using that symbol there, this double, uh, you know, spearhead there. So it has the same properties of the relation of directly under. So to do, to do so, I arbitrarily lay, uh, label my neighbors one, one zero, one one. Uh, these ones and zeros are just symbols, not the numbers. And then I define my relation as follows. Neighbor one does not bear the relation to anyone. And any, lab, uh, any neighbor labeled Y1 or Y0, Y being a variable, uh, bears the relation to the neighbor labeled Y. So uh, this is enough. We have already the structure, the, military, the, the same military structure, an, an isomorphic structure to that. And you see that what I'm doing here is like, uh, playing with the fact that with only with a domain and a, and a convenient interpretation of language, I can gerrymander a model so as to satisfy a theory in this language. So, so and this is trivialization. It's the idea that if objective scientific knowledge is purely formal, then science can only tell us information about structure. And we'll try to weaken this condition because it's strong. And we'll see that trivialization still reappears. And I ask uh, if structuralism is doing to fail, it's doing to fail, or, and I had to do so, sorry. Uh, formal structure. We're talking about structures, but what were the first uh, conceptualizations of structure? Well, uh, traditionally, structures in science have been regarded as the, math the mathematical part of theories. And the more uh, logically oriented literature uh, first thought it was expressible through mathematical logic. So scientific principles, laws of a correct theory uh, would determine a purely formal relational structure that would be capable of uh, imbuing individual terms with meaning. But uh, what do I mean by purely formal characterization? Suppose we have a finitely axiomatizable scientific theory. And, yet, and we express it syntactically so this form of theory T in second order language. It's second order because we, we are interested in the relation, in the relations. We want to quantify over the relations. And here each PN stands for an N, a set of N place predicates. So it's pretty general. This, so it, you can sub some functions under this, this, this construction too. So we quantify over P the predicates, we obtain the the respective Newman sentence. It's a purely formal claim, uh, which uh, whose extension, the extension of the predicate supposedly would secure the reference of the first order terms and the general sense of the, of the sentence. This in principle would capture the theory structure, uh, that is the objective knowledge encompassed by it. But does TN work? I mean, uh, it brings serious problems because it's a sentence that is completely devoid of, of empirical content. And extensionality is simply not enough to capture the intended meaning. So for example, if we have here a toy theory uh, about individuals named A, B, and C with a one place predicate. 
saying that one of them is the tallest. So its corresponding uh, Newman sentence is a very general statement that would lose the intended meaning because it captures uh, it captures also the form of completely different sentence, like uh, one of them is the tallest, or, sorry, the shortest or the smartest or so on. Uh, what's happening here is that uh, we have a domain, semantically I mean, domain with uh, with no interpretation whatsoever of the, any terms. So cardinality here is what matters. So it, it trivializes the content of the original sentence. But can we patch up our, our approach by considering, for example, that we're not going to generalize over all objects or relations. Can we, can we make it not purely abstract? Well, this is basically the Ramsey approach, uh, which we, got, we, we do to extract uh, the, the, the structure of a theory by taking uh, traditionally observability as such a criterion. So we're going to generalize over everything that is not observable. Okay, so Maxwell gives this example of uh, ramification, and his, his, this theory here says more or less informally that for every radium atom that radioactively decays, there will be a, a click on a Geiger counter nearby. And I've painted in blue the, the theoretical predicates, which stands for the, the atom and the radioactive decay. And C uh, in red is the observational part, which wanna we don't want to get rid. We want to get rid of the theoretical part to achieve that ontologically the flex flexibility that we want to account for theory change, for instance. So we get this uh, Ramsey sentence here with the two predicate theoretical predicates quantified. Now we have, in principle, semi-interpreted terms. Uh, that would, in principle, to free ourselves from commitments to the non-observable part. Okay, uh, but does TR do the job? Uh, can it really capture the structure of content? Well, first, I want to point out that this distinction between observable and non-observable is can bring serious epistemological issues, such as methodological solipsism. For instance, should our observations be indexed? Uh, by the, by the person who observes. And another problem is uh, the theory and laden ladenness of scientific observations, because uh, we can uh, ascribe a degree of, of, uh, the of theoretical ladenness to almost anything uh, we observe in a scientific experiment. Okay? Even uh, to recognize a Geiger counter, one could say it has some theory back in that. So second, uh, we are still quantifying over non-observables, and this may bring similar, uh, ontological commitments. Surely uh, Quinian would object to our goals with this here. Uh, and most of all, most important of all, is that the Ramsey sentence makes a weaker claim than T, the original theory, because it can follow from several different theories uh, with different theoretical uh, relations. This is good because we attain a certain ontological leeway, but on the other hand, uh, at the end, TR will preserve only the observational, empirical, perhaps, content and cardinality. So it practically collapses into anti realism plus a cardinality constraint, which is, I consider, to be trivial, trivialization. I'm going to delve. Uh, really quick, briefly, to the semantics, what is happening here, because it was it will be important for the semantic approach. So uh, we're dealing here with a two-order second language, second-order language with a two-sorted domain, which contains, for in, for, for example, uh, theoretical and observational domain, and relations defined on them. We have this intended model, this intended structure that. Uh, that interprets the language and makes T true with an observation and theoretical domain and sets on them. But the empirical part is the reduct of this 
intended structure because well it's the 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 part that encodes the empirical content okay from this we can define uh that an arbitrary structure k of this form is empirically correct if and only if it's on reddit it's isomorphic to the eyes reddit and here's one important bijection we have save it please from this we can also uh understand that the truth of of this Ramsey sentence, for TR to be true, we need only an I prime, which, what is an I prime? It's an expansion of I's redux with a theoretical domain and a set of unspecified relations in it. And in fact, we can even be more unspecific and ask for an unspecified domain, which is merely T cardinality correct. T cardinality correct is, it, is, it has the same cardinality of the theoretical domain of the intended structure. And this is the second bijection, uh, important bijection here that I want you to save for later. Finally, the result of this is that uh, TR is true uh, if and only if T has a model, a full model, that is T cardinality and empirically correct. And this is the, tri the trivialization of the Ramsey sense approach. Uh, it doesn't really do the job. And many attempts uh, to patch up this approach were made, and uh, they seem to all to fall short of obtaining a, a good response to a new model objection. I won't go uh, to them, uh, and I want to talk about these key elements to avoid trivialization. Um, the semantic approach. So far, we've we've been dealing with the syntactical approach to to theories, which uh, conceives theories uh, well syntactically. The conjunction of sentence with partially interpreted terms. These terms are partially interpreted, ideally, through correspondence rules. Uh, they would, in principle, connect the observational to the to the theoretical part. And the Ramsey sense approach would be the most straightforward way to cash out this notion of structure. Uh, but I, but we have seen that it's it's simply inappropriate in many respects. And I want to bring some elements from the semantic approach that came with its development from Sopius, Confrassin, Otav, uh, which takes theories to be families of models. But uh, naturally, uh, these, these, both of these approaches overlap in many cases and are hard to distinguish, especially with, when we can define mappings from the syntactical part that the axiomatization to the models, to the semantic part. So they overlap in many respects. Uh, and I ask, can the model theoretical approach ensure that we stick to the to the non-trivial notion of structure, to uh, to the intended structure interpretation? While French and Leibman said that the the Newman's objection won't arise in this framework, uh, Otavio and Meyer remind us that that's not obvious at all. And the the counter example to this was presented uh, by Ainsworth and Catland. And it goes very much like the way I just showed uh, in the semantic backdrop of the Ramsey sense approach. <laughs> because we are almost talking semantics there. And this is due mainly to the two bijections I told you. Because from them we can define this observational redux of unintended structures that will be isomorphic to the observational redux of the intended one on the one part. And on the other, sorry, on the other, uh, we can define from the other bijection the unintended relations that will make their whole structures isomorphic based on only on that uh, on the fact that they're uh, T cardinality correct, they share the same cardinality. And as I see this, this problem uh, arises when two things are at play. The first one is that the syntactical part of our, the uh, of our intended structure ultimately looks a lot like a Ramsey sentence. It can look uh, in disguise, perhaps. And the second one, the second fact, is that I think we are operating in a purely mathematical framework where we can freely came up, uh, come up with isomorphic, irrelevant, unintended structures. So regarding this first point, I think that uh, uh, the connection between theory and observation cannot come down to vague correspondence rules in the object language, which is, to me, it seems to be 
occurring in, in Maxwell's example, for instance, because it blurs the distinction between rule, axiom, empirical statements. I don't want to generalize over, I don't want to quantify over uh, an empirical rule. And, uh, you know, it, it blurs something that should not be blurred. And I think uh, I prefer the, the semantic depiction of this connection between uh, observation and theory, which is through the a more complex hierarchy of structures, uh, where the base mathematical theory of the two ends, one being theoret theoretical and the other uh, experimental, uh, tend to be notably different. One tends to be smooth, uh, differentiable, and the other uh, discrete, statistical, perhaps. Uh, and on top of that, sorry, and on top of that, uh, the I think uh, the approach, the, the the semantic approach, is right in using a theory of measurement to connect the empirical objects to numerical ones, because there will be also a lot of restrictions imposed on the more abstract counterpart. So, uh, and this leads us to the last point, to the number two. I think it's that applied mathematics cannot be completely pure. And making this impute explicit can be of help. So, for instance, we have to assume that we are dealing uh, ultimately with all element in the, in the formal framework, the more general formal framework. And that depending on the context, the set of all element, uh, uh, the, the, the choice of the set can be empirically relevant. And uh, I, I, want, I would cite some, some example here, but perhaps the, the conversation afterwards. Uh, I, I, I point out, I also point out that uh, we should also think about imposing certain conditions on existential claims in the more general framework. Uh, Supers didn't care much about the set theoretic axioms running the backdrop, but maybe Newman's objection is an anomaly that gives us enough motivation to delve into foundational issues. Uh, in the analysis of science. So uh, I think this might be relevant. And lastly, for me, to, there seems to be some non-trivial knowledge encoded in this very gerrymandering act of defining relations in pursuit of isomorphisms. And perhaps a more suitable notion of, of structure, formal structure, should be capable of accommodating it. I think that's, that's perhaps one of the most important points. So uh, we've seen that the, Newman's, uh, the Newman objection poses a serious threat to structuralism, and in particular, the more traditional way to cash out or to explicate the structure through Ramsey's sentence. But we've seen that it also can affect uh, the semantic approach. And based on what we just talked about, I think that to overcome trivialization, Newman's objection, if possible, we need a more precise notion of scientific structure, and more generally, a better understanding of the connection between mathematics and applied mathematics. And well, that's it. Thank you all.